Greatest misconception number four, black people are stupid. Throughout the history of man, men have sought to promote the superiority of their own people over others. Oppression of the minorities have inevitably led to the misconceived notion that the majority holds racial superiority over the minority. The greatest example of this is the oppression of blacks in the United States. In particular, the idea that blacks are mentally inferior to whites. White supremacists have used a variety of excuses to validate their own racist beliefs, sometimes invoking religion, proclaiming that their own race is God's chosen people. But near the mid to late 1800s, scientific racism began to pick up pace, utilizing pseudoscientific principles to prove that whites were superior to blacks. It just so happened that Darwin's On the Origin of Species was published around this time. While Darwin made it very clear that the so-called separate races were not distinctive enough from each other to classify them as separate species and condemn the notion of racial superiority, his work was perverted by white supremacists to further their own ideals. The new ideals held that blacks were not as evolved as whites and were lower on the evolutionary chain, being more similar to chimpanzees than humans. Oda Benga was a Congolese pygmy born in 1883 whose wife and two children were murdered by slave traders who attacked his village. Oda was off on a hunting expedition at the time but was later captured by slavers. A businessman and missionary named Samuel Werner managed to negotiate Oda's release into his custody. Oda was brought back to America with Werner where Oda began to perform various exhibits and displays which were intended to show human evolution and display to the gawking public the savages from Africa to stand in stark contrast to dominant whites of America. Perhaps his most famous exhibitions were at the Bronx Zoo in 1904 where Oda was prominently displayed. On the first day of his exhibit visitors found Oda in the monkey house exhibit. The exhibit was brought on by both spectacle from whites and derision from African Americans. In the face of the controversy, the New York Times stated as follows, We do not quite understand all the emotion which others are expressing in the matter. It is absurd to make moan over the imagined humiliation and degradation Benga is suffering. The pygmies are very low in the human scale, and the suggestion that Benga should be in school instead of a cage ignores the high probability that school would be a place from which he could draw no advantage whatever. The idea that men are all much alike except as they have had or lacked opportunities for getting an education out of books is now far out of date. Despite this, the zoo eventually caved to public pressure and Benga was removed from the zoo. After this, Oda began to assimilate himself into American culture and even dressed in western clothing and got a job at a tobacco factory. However, he became more and more homesick and desperately wanted to return to his homeland in the Congo. However, when World War I broke out, return to the Congo became impossible and Ota became severely depressed. At the age of 32, Ota stole a firearm and shot himself in the heart. The fact of the matter is, there is no scientific basis for whites being smarter than blacks. But it still begs the question, why are there so many blacks in poor neighborhoods? Statistically, blacks perform worse academically than whites. There is a disproportionately low amount of blacks in high-level academic positions and fields compared to whites. There is also a disproportionately large amount of blacks in the prison system compared to whites when taking into account their respective populations. The reason for this is social inequalities that have been perpetuated historically. Blacks were brought over from Africa as slaves and were denied the same kind of education that whites had. In fact, educating blacks was highly condemned and they were barred from entering colleges. This only began to change with the civil rights movement in the 1960s. Forced to cope with poor, low-paying jobs, they had to live in poor, slum-like neighborhoods. While today, technically everything is supposed to be equal, the scars of discrimination still remain. Many blacks still live in poor and dangerous neighborhoods. In these societies, they have to cope with poor schools and even worse social conditions. They live in a society that doesn't reward education, hard work, ambition, going to college, or even being honest. It rewards being tough, being in a gang, doing drugs, selling drugs, stealing, and so on. Because of these negative pressures, it is very difficult for anyone to get out of that kind of neighborhood and into high society. The very few people that can represent the exceptional minority of individuals among us who can succeed in the face of adversity. But like anyone else, we are all products of our environment. Our environment sculpts who we are.
If you were to take a white baby from a rich white neighborhood and raise him in the slums, he will grow up to be just like them. It is an inevitable consequence of being human. We are learning creatures, and this way of life is all they know. So now you know better, and that was Enigma Hood's greatest misconceptions. If you have any ideas for future misconceptions, just let me know.